Hello and welcome. My name is Americame, and I am here to teach you how to play a fucking terrible character in a 22-year-old video game. Maybe you're new to this game and you're trying to find a character that gels with you, or you're a little more experienced and you want to pick up a fun secondary, or maybe you just can't resist the allure of Victor's juicy, juicy cheek. Regardless, I'm here to help you on that journey and here to give you all the tools you could need to be a competent Victor player. This is going to be a full and complete breakdown of Victor, going through normals, special moves, combos, set plays, matchups, and anything else you could ever want for being good at this game. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this bitch. The first question you might ask yourself is why? Why Victor? I did say he was one of the worst, and that's true. Most people would put him as worst or second worst, depending on who you ask. But, there is positives to using this big lovable hunk of junk. The biggest and most apparent reason is that Victor is a big, beefy boy, touting the highest amount of defense out of any character in the game. If you were just trading blows back and forth with, say, any other character, you would probably win every time. That's how high your defense is. Your normals ain't nothing to sneeze at either. You got big old muscly arms and legs that can outrange and outprioritize most of the characters in the mid-range game. On top of that, you have great anti-airs, some of the best in the game in fact, relatively high damage and fast command throws, so what's wrong? What makes Victor so trash? Well, the answer lies the nitty gritty itty bitty details. That's right, the frame data. In short, Victor's moves are awful when whipped, leaving you open for a very long time. This makes playing footsies, which should be one of Victor's strong points, unnecessarily risky and annoying. Victor's big boy status also gives way to many problems within itself. He boasts the third tallest standing hitbox, the second tallest crouching hitbox, only beaten by Bishamon by one pixel, and the worst dashing hitbox in the game. Victor is incredibly susceptible to instant overheads, which, let me tell you, makes the B matchup, oh, just so much fun. All this, coupled with the lack of an invincible move and overall slow movement speed, is enough to place Victor at the bottom of most people's tier lists. But tracks, I hear all of you asking. If Victor's so bad, why do you play him? What keeps you coming back to this character? And I'll tell you, man, this fucker feels good. His buttons feel good, and I am a big fan of good feeling buttons. Victor's main gameplay gimmick is his electric normals. When grounded, Victor essentially has two different sets of medium and heavy normals. A normal version, and an electric version. The electric versions in general have a longer startup and recovery time, but boast bigger damage, bigger hitboxes, longer hit stun, and virtually no pushback on hit. These electric normals can be activated by simply holding down the attack button instead of just tapping it. The bigger hitboxes and longer hit stun can lead to new combos and very high damage if you know what you're doing. These will be more explored in the combos and normal section of this video. But before I do that, I just want to take a few seconds here to look at the different colors for Victor. If I'm even halfway confident in editing this video, they should be on screen right now. And I mean, just look at them beauties. You can't go wrong with any one of them. Pick whatever character you want, but I warn you, that HP version, the one with the orange jacket, that's only for true alpha chads. Alright, enough of this, let's get into the real meat and potatoes. As you could probably already tell, this section of the video is going to be going over Victor's normals, standing, jumping, and crouching. We'll be reviewing the hitboxes and the frame data of both the regular and electric versions of each normal. I'll also let you know ahead of time that every standing normal, aside from Light Punch, has a close and far variation. The far variation activating when the opponent is 64 pixels or further away from Victor. The close variations of most of these normals are kinda ass, so I won't be spending a ton of time on them, but we will review the hitboxes and frame data nonetheless. Oh, and as a quick add-in, these words and numbers at the top of the screen, they're just part of the Lua script I use for my main uh, training room for VSAV. They don't mean all that much, they're not super helpful right now. They'll help when we get to special moves, but for right now, don't pay them too much mind. 
let's start off with the tried and true standing light punch. This move has 5 frames startup, active for 3 frames, plus 4 on hit, plus 3 on block, and a special cancel move. This shares a 3-way tie for Victor's fastest normal, alongside close light kick and crouching light punch. Initially you might think this move looks like a fantastic anti-air, since it seems like it has very good vertical range. However, this move hits more long than tall, since the hitbox actually runs against the underside of Victor's arm. This makes it more of a preemptive anti-air. Good for swatting opponents who you think are about to jump, but not so good at swatting opponents who are already in the air. This move's horizontal hitbox is one of the best in the game for a jab, extending incredibly far out. This makes it a wonderful low-risk poke and one of your best dashing normals for space control, dash back jab being one of your best retreating options. However, Stand LP will whip on characters with a low crouch animation, such as QB, Buletta, and Wolf, so keep that in mind before throwing the move out willy-nilly. That's about it for this right now. I'll talk a little more about Standing Light Punch when I get into Renda bonuses, but I'm not gonna spoil that just yet. You're gonna have to wait for that. Close Light Kick shares the same frame data as Standing Light Punch, but with one more advantage frame on hit and on block. It is special cancelable, so I'll have to give it points for that. However, it doesn't have near the range to stand Light Punch, and hits less characters when crouching since it's higher up. It also has the shortest activation range out of any close normal, changing to Far Light Kick at 32 pixels. This is actually a good thing, since Far Light Kick outclasses this normal in every way except for startup frames. Despite Far Light Kick's stubby range, it's actually one of your best pressure tools. It boasts an impressive plus 7 on block, the highest block advantage out of any one of your standard normals. It will hit every character crouching, and it's special cancelable. Dashing LK is a fantastic approach option, which is plus enough on block to be a true block string with any one of your light normals. This move isn't only just good on block, the plus 8 hit advantage actually gives you enough frames to link any light normal you want afterwards. It's a tough link, only about 2 or 3 frames, but being able to hit it consistently will greatly increase your ability to safely confirm your damage. You can also confirm out of your dashing light kick, which makes it an even better approach tool. You can land full combos anytime you hit with an advancing normal, which is fantastic. Victor's normal close stand medium punch is fucking terrible. The startup is awful, it's minus on hit, it's minus on block, it's just bad. There is zero use for this move at all, so I'm not gonna even bother showing footage for it. His electric close medium punch, however, actually does have one use. Since this move is plus 7 on hit, you can chain into it and then link out of it using a light normal. It's fairly difficult to do, but if you can land it consistently, it will net you a nice damage increase on any one of your combos. This move shouldn't be used in any other context, since the startup time is just horrendous, and its hitbox is nothing to write home about. Victor's far MP is a marginally better move than its close counterpart. Horizontally, the hitbox is very nice, and can be used to counterpart people to mid-range distance. It's safe on block, and like stand like punch can be used as a preemptive anti-air. A reminder that all grounded normals in Vampire Savior cannot be blocked while in the air. The electric version does everything the normal version does, but better. In general, most electric normals should only really be used in combos when you can confirm them, but this is one of the exceptions. Curiously, it's actually one frame faster than the regular version. It's got a ton of active frames too, making this a pretty damn good poke. It's a lot worse on block, but the hitbox is even better. Using this as an anti-air will shock the opponent mid-air, giving you about a full extra second of hit stun before they flip out and land on their feet. This sort of air reset is absolutely crucial to Victor's gameplay. I'll get more into this when I talk about general game plan and set play, but just know anytime you get this reset, you basically get a free safe jump. Now there's a property of Victor's electricity that I haven't mentioned yet, but it's pretty damn cool. Every electrically powered move that Victor has can absorb projectiles. Pretty much every non-super base projectile can be absorbed. Medium Punch is one of the best normals to do this with due to its far range and relatively fast startup time. Note, however, you can only absorb non-enhanced projectiles. If you wanted to absorb an ES projectile, you have to use an ES special move of your own. Close Medium Kick is another normal that really shouldn't exist. It's got worse startup than Close Medium Punch, it's also minus on hit, it's just garbage. The electric version is a pretty curious case, however. 
The startup is worse, and the hitbox is worse, but it touts around a fucking insane 12 active frames. Hitting this meaty will leave you anywhere between plus 6 and plus 18. If you get the latter, you could literally link any normal out of this, except for close electric heavy kick. You could link any special move you want off of this too. Honestly, you could do whatever the hell you want. You're plus 18. Far medium kick is more or less interchangeable with far medium punch. All the frame data is pretty much the same, but medium kick is slightly higher than medium punch. This means a couple of things. For one, it is entirely possible to counter hit other characters' lower hitting moves. And for two, it's a little easier hitting other people out of the air with this normal. The electric version is about what you'd expect at this point. Slower start up and worse on block, but a bigger hitbox and slightly more frame advantage on hit. The hitbox is even higher up than the normal version, making it even better for an anti-air. And remember, anytime you hit someone with an electric anti-air, they get that extra hit stuff. However, it's easier for some characters to crouch under this version than the normal version, so just keep that in mind. There's not much to talk about close heavy punch aside from its damage. It's your highest damage chain ender that isn't terrible. It also does that little air reset on hit, even if the opponent is grounded. It leaves you plus 4 after as well, giving you enough time to do a small mix-up. The electric version has a slower startup, bigger hitbox, and is way, way, way more plus on hit. This is because it also resets standing opponents on hit, but has the additional hit stun of electric normals. The bigger hitbox makes it slightly easier to catch opponents jumping out. This makes it an okay option select with your heavy punch throw against characters with slower jumps. Far heavy punch is one of your farthest reaching and best foes. It resets on hit and is only minus 3 on block. It's pretty hard for most characters to deal with this normal at its max range. As effective as it is, there is always the possibility of them just outspacing you and jumping over it, so be wary of that. The electric version is one of your best normals in general. It has three more frames of startup, but the hitbox is bigger, better, and more disjointed. It's easily the best way to end your farther reaching chains. It also resets on hit and gives you that bonus electric hit stun. It's also a damn good normal to swat out fireballs with, allowing you in some cases to counter hit them before the fireball even comes out. It is, however, even worse on whiff than its normal variant. So be especially mindful when throwing this out in neutral, or else you're gonna eat some big, big damage. Close Heavy Kick is straight up ass, literally and figuratively. To give it some credit, it is your highest damage chain ender. That's about the only thing this normal has going for it, unfortunately. It's zero on hit and doesn't even reset. The startup is kind of crap too, as it can't even chain from lights. If you really need that little bit of extra damage, I'd say go for it. Other than that, just use any other heavy to end your chain. The electric version's a little better all in all. This is the slowest normal you have, so you really should not be using this in neutral. But it does do decent damage, and has the most plus frames on hit, one frame more than Crouching Heavy Punch. However, the fact that this is a close normal makes it a liability. If you misspace this in a combo, you'll get far heavy kick, which really isn't meant for hitting grounded opponents. Chances are that will whiff and you'll get punished accordingly. So personally, I just stick to more reliable combo enders. Far heavy kick is one of your best true blue anti-airs. None of that preemptive shit. You see someone jump, you hit this button, you knock them out of the air. It hits higher up than any other normal you have, making it great to counter characters who like to fly around or float. However, the hitbox is only at the tip of the foot. You're never going to hit anyone on the ground with this. This is pretty much strictly an anti-air. The electric version is what you'd expect. It's bigger, it's got more hit stun, but it's worse on block and terrible when with. You can hit grounded opponents with this version, but it isn't super consistent, so it's not really recommended. Again, this is great against characters who like to float around, like Jetta or B or Anacharis. Let them know that bullies get the boot! Also, it is an electric normal, so you can kick fireballs out of the air, which makes you feel like such a fucking pro. Well, that's all the standing normals, let's move on to crouching. Crouching Light Punch is an incredibly good poke and just one of your best buttons. It's got 5 frame startup, making it your fastest crouching normal, and it's plus a whole lot on hit and unblock. You play with your lights a lot as Victor, since every other normal you have is pretty committal. Crouch LP is special cancelable. It can chain into itself, it can link into itself, it can chain or link into any one of your other lights. It's all in all really damn good. It also hits a little higher off the ground than Crouching Light Kick, meaning you can anti-air some air dashes with this. It's not great, but 
it's an option, so yeah, take it how you will. Crouching Light Kick hits low, and it's the fastest low you have. It's one frame slower than Crouching Light Punch, but it's even better on hit and on block. In fact, it's the best on block. You get plus 8, which is kinda insane. This move goes out incredibly far for a short. Everything I said about Crouching Light Punch applies here. It's special cancelable, it can chain into itself, it can link into itself, it can link into any other of your light normals, it's really damn great. You can actually link Crouch LK into itself up to three times, making it really, really good for confirming your chains. All in all, this is just a top tier button. Use it a lot. Crouching Medium Punch is pretty much identical to Far Standing Medium Punch. The frame dead is a little better. It's plus two on hit instead of zero, and plus one on block instead of minus one. It is lower to the ground, making it less effective as an anti-air. But it has the benefit of not having a shitty close normal attached to it. So the majority of the time, I use this instead of the standing variation in combos just to be more consistent. The electric version, again, is pretty much identical to electric far medium punch. Also, like far electric medium punch, this is one of your best normals for swatting out projectiles. However, the frame data is just overall better, having two more advantage frames on hit and on block. It's one frame faster than the normal version of Crouching Medium Punch. Since it's plus 6 on hit, it is possible to link out of this normal using the light. However, it's only a 1 or 2 frame link, so it's not super consistent. You have a better crouching normal for that anyway, which we'll get into in a minute. Crouching Medium Kick is a very far-reaching low. Although not as good as Crouching Light Kick, the frame data on this is still pretty darn good. Having a normal go out this far and being plus on block is a luxury in any context. It's not as riskless as Crouching Light Kick, but it doesn't hurt to throw this out every once in a while. Electric version is bigger and faster, one frame faster than the normal. It's plus a lot on hit, plus 8 in fact. You can probably already see where I'm about to go with this. You can link out of this using any one of your light normals, and it's a lot more consistent than close electric medium punch. Pepper this into any one of your combos and you're getting a nice damage boost overall. Crouching Heavy Punch is a god tier anti-air, so one of the best in the entire game. The normal version starts up relatively fast and has a great hitbox above your head. It's not as tall as standing heavy kick, but it's faster and it gets the job done just as well. It's plus 4 when you hit a grounded opponent, and even more plus when you hit someone out of the air with it, allowing you to get a small mix-up afterwards. All in all, great normal. Use it a lot. Electric Crouching Heavy Punch is like if Jesus Christ, the Dalai Lama, and Martin Luther King all formed together like Megazord to make the world's greatest anti-air. The hitbox on this is insane. It hits in front of you, behind you, above you, below you, around you, I, I, it, it, it's, it's everywhere. Not to mention it's got 13, count them, 13 active frames. If you whiff it, you're gonna get hit. It's pretty slow, but that does not stop most victors from just throwing this thing out at random whenever they feel like it. If you're close enough to end your chains with this, you should go for it every time. It's plus 46, you can get whatever the hell you want after that. If I had to give this thing a downside at all, I would say it's not as tall as standing heavy kick. This can lead to some situations where if the opponent is particularly close, they can jump over it. But honestly, that's fairly rare. This thing is fucking massive. As sweeps go in this game, Victor's Crutching Heavy Kick is one of the best. It shoots out super, super far and is only minus two on block. It's a bit on the slower side, being 14 frames, but it's still good to throw out every once in a while. However, as a combo ender, you don't really use this all that much. You have the option to reset opponents instead of knock them down, completely taking away their ability to tech roll. That's almost always better than knocking down with a sweep. However, there are situations where the opponent can't be hit by any of those normals. Say they're too far away for crouching fears, and they're crouching themselves, so standing fears will go right over them. In that situation, it's always pretty safe to go for a knockdown. The electric version comes out just as fast, but is pretty bad on block. The range is just as good, if not even better. The real plus side of this, however, is the hit stun. Ending your combo with Electric Sweep will allow you to get a Pursuit Attack anywhere on screen. Most characters can only get guaranteed Pursuits after special knockdowns, but Victor can just do it off of the Sweep. Use this to end chains when your Fierces aren't available, or you need that little extra damage from Pursuit to end out a round. Alright, we're in the home stretch now, let's move on to Jumping Attacks. Jump Jab is part of what I like to call a holy trinity of jump normals. We'll call this one The Father. This comes out pretty damn fast and hits super far below you. On taller characters, you can use this as an instant overhead. And on everyone, you can use this as a really damn good air-to-air. -air. Jumping Light Kick is your fastest air normal, coming out in only 6 frames. It's fairly stubby, but the animation is actually quite subtle. This means it's pretty good for faking empty jumps. 
jump in, wait to the last possible second, and press light kick. I also wouldn't be doing my duty right if I didn't tell you I once got this normal to cross up. I don't know how, I've never been able to recreate it, but I did it. If you can find out how, I mean, that's pretty cool. Jumping medium punch is fantastic for air to airs, mainly due to its option select with air throw. It also extends pretty far out, making it really good for space controlling. However, for jump ins, this is not one of your best. Every one of your other normals have a lower hitbox, so it's better for jumping in. This is mainly strictly as an air to air. Jumping medium kick is pretty much interchangeable with jumping medium punch. It doesn't have an air throw tied to it, so it's not as great as an air to air, but it does have a lower hitbox and extends pretty far horizontally, making it a really darn good jump in. You have a neutral jump unique normal, which is your neutral jump heavy punch. This is the second in the holy trinity of jump normals. I'll call this the sun. This thing comes out as fast as your jumping jab and hits eight miles below you. This thing is huge. It can easily instant overhead most of the cast and it causes a knockdown on hit. It's also fast enough that if you instantly do it out of a jump, you'll recover enough time to land with another normal. This is fantastic for just walling people out and creating airspace. All in all, top tier normal, use it a lot. Angle Jump Heavy Punch is the third in the holy trinity of jumping normals. I call this one the holy fuck how do I deal with this thing. This shit is retarded. This shit is unbelievably retarded. The hitbox is huge, it recesses your hurtbox, and is active for 6 frames. Most characters simply cannot deal with this. If they don't have a decent enough anti-air, there is nothing stopping you from jumping fierce all day. I'm dead serious when I say this is probably the best jumping normal in the game. Outside of maybe Zable jumping light kick, but that's dumb for a whole different reason that we'll get into later. But yeah, just spam the fuck out of this move. Honestly, like what the hell are you doing? You think this character takes brain? Nah, fucking jump heavy punch. Just do it. Just do it! Just fucking do it! Just fuck. And finally, we round off the jumping normals with Jumping Heavy Kick. This hits farther below you than any other jumping normal. Honestly, the only thing stopping this jumping normal from being a god tier one is the fact that it takes so long to start up and is only active for two frames. That in no way means you shouldn't use it. It's really good, honestly. It's just it kind of gets outclassed by jumping fears. Just kind of notice what situations call for this normal better. Alright, that's it. We're done with the normals. Now let's move on to Universal Mechanics, Special Moves, and EX Moves. In this section, we're going to cover everything that isn't a normal. This includes Universal Mechanics, Special Moves, and EX Moves, which are the supers, but I'm trying to use the correct nomenclature here. For Special Move inputs, I'll be describing them using standard number notation. I'm gonna assume all of you know what that means, but just in case, I'm gonna leave the sheet up on screen now. Pause the video if you want to look at it, but yeah, this is how I'm gonna describe shit. Also, I want to give a quick shout out here to Rotanivore. I've been using the Mizumi Wiki for Vampire Saber for most of the information here, but when it comes to Victor's page, it's kind of lackluster when it comes to the special moves. So Rotanivore helped me with all the information I was missing, so special shout outs to you, man. Thanks a bunch. Alright, with that out of the way, let's move on to throws. On the ground, Victor can throw with four different buttons, medium punch, medium kick, heavy punch, and heavy kick. All four throws have the same startup and range. The two kick throws are exactly the same, so we'll start with them. Throwing with either medium kick or heavy kick will have Victor grab the opponent with his ass and throw him halfway across the screen. To be honest, this throw isn't very useful. You give up so much ground that Victor has to work so hard to get anyways. I would only go for this if you can throw the opponent into the corner or if they're teching your punch throws every time. His medium punch throw has Victor grab the opponent and crush him with his palm. This throw can be mashed to do even more damage. Also, regardless if the opponent techs or not, they will always flip out and land on their feet when the throw is over. This can actually lead for some pretty nice Okazemi. The Heavy Punch version has Victor crushing the opponent with his jaw. This also can be mashed and does more damage than the Medium Punch version. The opponent gets knocked down after this throw, which can give you worse Okazemi depending on the character you're fighting. However, it leaves you in perfect range to get a quick pursuit afterwards, giving you even more damage. Victor also has a special throw follow-up tied to his punch throws. If you grab with a punch button and then input 2-8 punch before the first hit comes out, which is about 40 frames, Victor will jump up in the air and slam the opponent down to the ground in a move called Graviton Knuckle. Whether or not the opponent techs this throw, it will always do max damage. The opponent flies pretty far away after this, giving you little to no Okazemi, but if you're going for damage, you should always want to go for Graviton Knuckle. The damage is much higher than any other throw you have fully mashed. His hair throw is only tied to his medium punch or heavy punch. There's nothing too much to say about it. It's good. It's an air throw. You should use it. 
Alright, that out of the way, let's talk about his pursuit attack. Victor has, by far and large, the worst pursuit attack in the game. Every other character's pursuit attack will track the opponent to some varying degree. If it doesn't hit the opponent, it won't play out the full animation and gives you some slight positional advantage. This is not the case for Victor, at all. Victor's pursuit attack will always go the same set distance regardless if the opponent is all the way across the screen. Even when whiffed, it will always play out the full animation. And when it's over, Victor will fly back and land on his feet where he inputted the pursuit attack, giving you absolutely no positional advantage. With that being said, the opponent has to be pretty damn close to Victor to even land this pursuit attack. The hitbox always comes out in 41 frames, which actually isn't that bad. You can get guaranteed pursuit attacks anywhere on screen after a giga burn or a heavy punch throw. Other than that, it's pretty easy to hit the opponent when they're in the corner if you hit them with an electric sweep. Also, anytime you go for a pursuit attack, you should always spend the bar and make it an ES pursuit attack. The damage is absolutely worth it. Now, Victor actually has a second pursuit attack, but we'll get into that when we talk about special moves. For now, let's move on to guard cancel. Your guard cancel is your giga burn move, done by inputting 623 and kick. All the normal versions have 10 frames startup while the ES version has 13. As guard cancels go, it's okay. It's fairly fast. It's not invincible, however. All guard cancels have one frame of invincibility on startup, but that's all you get. You ain't no Dimitri, that's for sure. You get a knockdown anytime it hits, which leads to a free pursuit, which is pretty good. Also, if the opponent baits and blocks your guard cancel, they're all fairly safe, the light and medium version being minus four, the heavy being minus eight, and the ES version being minus two. There's also some fancy shenanigans you can do where you purposely guard cancel a move that's too far away to kind of gain space and steal your turn, but that's mostly just a gimmick. However, if you do manage to pull that gimmick off, you can potentially get an even higher damage punish than the guard cancel itself. Okay, let's move on to special moves. Mega Steak is a full screen overhead you get by inputting Charge 2, 8 Punch. The startup on this is pretty slow, 32 frames for light, 35 for medium, 37 for heavy, and 39 for ES. However, this move has a good surprise factor to it since it goes farther than Victor can reach normally. The hitbox is only at the fist though, so you can't really hit opponents who are jumping with it. It knocks down on hit, but is negative 26 on block for the normal versions and negative 23 for the ES version. The real use for this move, however, is the fact that it can act is a secondary pursuit attack. Hitting your opponent with an electric sweep gives you more than enough time to hit them with Mega Stake afterwards. The button you use to activate it depends on the distance Mega Stake goes, so you want to pay attention to how far away the opponent is when you press the button. But no matter where they are or which direction they tech, you can pretty much always land this. The one exception, however, is if you hit someone with the sweep when they're in the corner. When that happens, Mega Stake will usually overshoot the opponent, so instead just use your normal pursuit attack. You can also land a Mega Stake OTG after hitting with a normal Mega Stake, which is pretty funny. Mega Forehead is a big old headbutt you can get by inputting Charge 4 6 Punch. All versions have 15 frame startup, and all versions are punishable on block. As the wiki says, this move will lose you gains. It can be used very sparingly as a surprise anti-air, but you can block it in the air, so it's really not that good. It's situationally okay to keep characters with straight air dashes in check, characters like Zabel or Lele. Also, I have to mention the ES version does go through projectiles, just not all that consistently. So yeah, don't use Mega Forehead that much. You can use it a bit to kind of play chicken, but you're gonna lose that more than you're gonna win it. I already talked about Giga Burn a little bit, but just as a refresher, you get it by inputting 623 Kick. All the normal versions have 10 frame startup, and the ES version has 13. The light and medium versions are minus 4 on block, heavy is minus 8, and ES is minus 2. These are all fairly safe on their own, but could be made even safer. All versions of Giga Burn have 8 active frames. You can take that minus 4 on block to a plus 4 if spaced properly or hit meaty. Giga Burn is also great for whiffing, since you gain space and build meter while doing it. You'd be surprised how hard it is to whiff punish this move. You can block pretty much the instant you touch the ground. Gaining space with Giga Burn also allows you to buffer other moves while in its animation, leading to some pretty cheeky 720 setups. Giga Burn is also a pretty good anti air in its own right, allowing you to pretty safely call out people who are jumping. And again, anytime you hit with Giga Burn, you get a knockdown, and on that knockdown you get a guaranteed pursuit attack. Now it doesn't have any invincibility on its own, so you shouldn't be really using this as a reversal. But in any other situation, I'd say go for it. Giga Burn is probably your best special move overall. Gyro Crush is a Lariat style move you get by inputting 214 Punch. All the normal versions come out in 9 frames, while the ES version comes out in 10. I want to get this out of the way immediately, but this is not a Zen Geef Lariat. It has no invincibility and doesn't even protect your head. It is, however, a fairly good long-range anti-air. 
It goes about as far out as Stan fears, but with noticeably less startup time. This is particularly good against far jump-ins or characters with air dashes. The light and medium versions are only minus 4 on block, and the heavy version is minus 12. Even so, every version can be drifted a little bit by holding forward or back, making it even safer. The light one is particularly good for building meter, since it can be whiffed with little to no consequence. Every version also absorbs projectiles, and it'll give you a little bit of meter when you do it. Every version but the light can hit multiple times, but there is some issues with this. Looking at this footage, you can see there are gaps in the hitboxes. Each hit is active for 4 frames and then has a 4 frame gap. I don't know if this was an oversight or not, but it leads to unnecessarily annoying situations where opponents can actually jump through your lariat. I once had a B player mid-tournament CR me through the gap in my lariat and boy was I fucking pissed about that. I want to give a special mention to ES Gyro Crush since it's almost an entirely different move. He'll swing around like usual, but he has a final hit where he lunges his fist forward. This final hit is actually plus 3 on block, making it one of your best tools for getting in. The final hit will also lunge through any projectile thrown and hit the person standing behind it. Hitting an opponent with this will pop them up a little bit, allowing a small juggle afterwards. You can hit with HP Gyro Crush or another ES Gyro Crush for more damage. The timing is pretty strict, but not too hard to get down with a little practice. One last thing I want to mention is that almost all opponents can duck under your lariat, so be wary of that when hitting an opponent on the ground. Other than that, it's a really good special move. Use it a lot. Mega Spike is a one-frame command throw that you get by inputting 360 and punch. Any punch button you use will give you the exact same version, and there is no ES version. This move does great damage, and is one of the cornerstones of your mix-up game. It's tempting to go for this all the time, but be warned, if you whiff it, you're going to be stuck in a whiff animation for 45 frames. Now there's one big glaring issue with Mega Spike. As you can see here, the grab range, highlighted in yellow, is laughable. It's only a few pixels bigger than your normal grab range. It's pathetic. If you are not completely point blank, Mega Spike is not going to land. This pretty much negates its use defensively and should be only used as a mix-up tool. But as a mix-up tool, it's fantastic. The amount of damage you can get out of this meterless is terrifying, and will cause a lot of opponents to jump when Victor gets close. And Victor loves it when his opponents jump with all of his fantastic anti-airs. Peppering in one or two dash-up 360s in your pressure strings will also make the opponent piss their pants in fear. If you learn your 360 setups, you're gonna have your opponent quaking in their boots in no time. Mega Shock is another one frame command throw, but instead of a 360, it can be activated by inputting 236 and kick. Again, every button does the same version, and there is no ES version. You can mash kicks to do more damage, but it will never do as much damage as Mega Spike or Graviton Knuckle. It has the same laughably bad range as Mega Spike too, but just with a slightly easier input. What really solidifies this move as being absolute garbage though, is the fact that you can tech it. That's right, you heard me right, I didn't stutter there. You can tech his command throw. I don't know what kind of fucking crack they were smoking when they made this move, but it's just mind-blowingly stupid to me. That's not even the worst part, too. The worst part is that Mega Shock has command overlap with Giga Burn. You know, that actual good special move that you use a lot? Guess what? Now you misinputted it, and you got Mega Shock, and you're stuck in a whiff animation for 45 frames. Good job, idiot. Mega Shock is doo doo dog shit, and its existence only hinders Victor. My best piece of advice is make sure your DPs are extra clean, because in a best case scenario, you will never see this move ever. Minimum step is a command hop you have by pressing two and all three kicks. It has about the same speed and travel distance as a normal jump, but you can't air block during it. This move is pretty much useless. It can be okay at chasing back tech rolls, but that's about it. You can get a little bit of a funky mix up by canceling a normal into this and hopping through the opponent, but it's as gimmicky as gimmicks come. It will only work once at best, and it probably won't even work then, so just forget this move exists. Alright, let's move on to Dark Force and finally EX move. Victor's Dark Force is the Great Gurdenheim, and its effect actually changes depending on which buttons you press to activate it. No matter the version, they all activate in 58 frames and deactivate in 22 frames. That activation time seems pretty long, but you're also invincible for 59 frames. Just the activation alone can get you out of a couple of tricky situations, since it's the only invincible move you have. But be warned, anytime you pop a Dark Force, you're gonna have to deactivate it at some time, so just make sure you land the hit. Activating Dark Force with either both your light buttons or medium buttons will replace all your standing punch buttons with a special command throw. 
This command throw itself comes out in three frames, and is about three times bigger than your normal command throws. It does about the same amount of damage as your mega spike throw, which is pretty fucking good. Honestly, if it didn't replace your standing normals, I would call this one of the better dark forces in the game, but as it stands right now, it's just okay. Activating Dark Force with your heavy buttons gives you a version that greatly buffs your forward dash. You go from having the worst dash in the game to one of the best, being able to clear over half the screen in a single dash. You also get crazy momentum with your dashing normals, making them a great approach option. Also, all your medium and heavy normals are electric by default, and you do not have to hold down the button. The only thing stopping this from being a straight upgrade is the fact that you also only get the close variation of your standing normals. This applies to dashing normals too, which is really annoying because it gets rid of your dashing far light kick. If you still had that, I'd say this Dark Force was amazing, but without it, it's just okay. You can do some dumb stuff with dashing close medium kick because it has like 12 active frames, but that's just a gimmick. Overall, both of these Dark Forces are okay and situationally good. But activating them is a risk in itself, because you gotta find a time to deactivate them safely. And if you don't get that time, you're gonna get punished. Inputting Charge 2, 8, and 2 kicks will give you Thunder Break. Or as Victor likes to call it... Stop! Victor jumps up the air and slams his fist against the ground, creating an electric shockwave that covers the entire floor. If you were just going off the wiki, you would think this move is horrid and complete garbage. That isn't entirely true, it's just the way you look at the move. The actual shockwave itself has very low damage, especially for an EX move. The shockwave should only really be used to give you a little bit of full screen presence. You could punish a fireball here or there with that and get a knockdown. It's also great on catching opponents who like to jump back a lot. However, the real utility in this move comes in the slam part of the slam dunk. When Vic jumps up in the air, his fists actually have a hitbox, and the important thing about that is that hitbox is air unblockable. That part of the move actually does really fantastic damage, easily the highest damage anti-air you have. Now that initial air hitbox does not come out until frame 27, so it's pretty easy to stuff it if they jump early enough. But if you know for 100% certain that your opponent is about to jump, this is a great call out and will net you a huge amount of damage. Other than that, it's good for the amount of chip it does. It's one of the better ways to quickly chip your opponent out to get a bat or the game off. So yeah, not completely terrible, but not great either by any long shot. Just know when it's okay to use this. Gurdenheim 3 is a one-frame EX command throw activated by doing a 720 and two kicks. It's as fast as Mega Spike and has twice the range. The damage on this is absolutely incredible. To my knowledge, it is the highest damage EX move in the game. If you can ever land this move, you should. The damage is absolutely worth it. Having to input a 720 though means you either have to buffer this from a normal or a jump in. The bigger range allows you to do tick throws with it, which are difficult but definitely worth learning. I'll link a video here going over different 720 setups. There are a lot, and there's more than I can do comfortably for a video here. So I'll let Arcade Legacy do it for me. I highly recommend you check it out, it'll help you out a lot. Alright, that's about it. Let's move on again to Victor's general game plan. I'm actually finishing editing up this entire tutorial now, and I've decided to split this whole thing into three different videos. It'll make this whole thing a little more digestible, because if I put it all together, it'd be about two hours long. The next video will be going over Victor's general game plan, his neutral tools, what to do offensively, defensively, and in neutral, and his set play options. The last video will be going over Victor's matchups against every character, and serve as a hub for any extra resources I have. But without further ado, this is Trax signing off. Stay free, everyone. Thank you.